Hi everyone, welcome back to the Silver Lake Automotive YouTube channel and this is Project Land Rover. Okay everyone, for a while now we've had this particular Land Rover in the racks. But first of all, welcome. I'm Robert Lewis, the Social Media Manager for Silver Lake Automotive Recycling. And next to me is a man that knows a thing or two about building great race cars and great V8s, Greg Rose. Greg, this Land Rover, we've had a good look around it already. What do we need to do? Let's talk about the engine first. Well, basically, this has got a TVR V8 engine sat in there. Um, it hasn't been running for a little while, so we're going to pull the engine out, go through it. It's got the wrong transfer box at the moment, so it's very low geared. So we'll take out the mechanicals, we'll swap the transfer box, go over the engine, determine its size and what it is, and go from there. Like I said, this was a bit of a project that came into us here at Silver Lake. Started a bit of work on it, came by the wayside, but this has got lots of great bolt-on bits ready for it, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Uh, everything's on it. It's just very dirty and it's just been left for a long time. So. We just need to go through it and make sure everything's good. But there's plenty of good parts on it. Uh, brand new chassis, shock absorbers, axles have all been rebuilt. Um, yeah, we just need to go through it and see what's good and what's not. Right, I think the first thing's first, mate. It's time to go to the wash bay. Absolutely. Right, you are the engine man. So let's talk engines. This looks like a TVR Rover V8, doesn't it? It is indeed, yes. Um, we haven't determined what uh, size it is yet, but we will do when we go through the engine. What we do know is the fuel injection has been taken off and it appears to have a 500 CFM Edelbrock four barrel car on it. Mm. Easy to tune these? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Plenty of parts available, easy to do. So wrong transfer box, how do you know that? Um, it's written on the side of it, they, they, and I've had uh, one of our friends who's a Land Rover expert come in and have a look. And uh, there are three different transfer boxes for these. Uh, and basically he said, this is completely the wrong one. This will give you a top speed of about 50 mile an hour. That's it. Less than uh, ideal. Yeah. So it needs, we can get another transfer box. Uh, we found them. Um, they're not expensive. We can swap it over and actually give it the gearing to be a, a you know a good road car as well as an off-roader. Absolutely. The interior doesn't look too good, is it? Let's go take a look at that. Okay. It needs a good clean, that's for sure. Yeah, that's got our parts. That. That's got our parts preparation department written all over that, hasn't it? Yeah. The interior on this looks undecidedly tatty, and there's lots of spares in the back as well, Greg. Yeah, we, uh, we don't know exactly what spares we've got, but there are a lot of them in there. Um, hopefully, there should be a lot of parts to, uh, to build the rest of this up. Yeah, okay. Definitely time for the wash bay, and uh, we might have to clean out the inside as well. Yeah. Yeah, the one thing that any good car dealer doesn't give you, Greg, is a good look underneath. What does it look like under here? It doesn't look too bad at all. It's just a little bit dirty, um, and that's about it. But it looks like everything's been replaced. Brand new galvanized chassis, brand new dampers and spring steering damper. Everything, door system, all looks like new under here. So fantastic. You know, I think this is, uh, yeah, this is this is excellent. Someone has uh, spent a lot of time and money on this at some point. Absolutely. The only thing we've got to work out what to do with it afterwards is do we keep it or stick it on the salvage auction? Well, we don't know. We'll have to ask the boss. We will. But I keep saying this, I think it's time to get it over to the wash bay and get all this grime off. Come on. Yeah.
Right, we've got this back from Wash Bay, and Greg, it doesn't look too bad, doesn't it? It's cleaned up quite well. No, it's come up very well. So. Right. However, we have found that this needs a bit more than meets the eye. It looks absolutely fantastic on the outside. It looks great at points on the inside, but we need to go through a bit of a list, don't we? Let's go from the front to the back. So first of all, we need to see if this fires up. Yep, see if we can get it running because the uh, wiring's looking a little bit suspect at the back there. So Yeah, that's the next thing on my list as well. The wiring at the back. Bullet connectors are good for many things, uh, but when there's many of them grouped together like that, it doesn't look the best. So we need to get some proper connections on there. But never mind, we'll see if we can get it f at least firing today or trying to fire so we can see that the engine is uh, reasonably well. Moving back, the gearbox as well. We've already spoken about the transfer boxes. Yeah, we? that's got to be changed, but... Like I say, if we can if we can get it running, we know the wiring's okay. We can then tidy the wiring, get all the mechanical out, swap the transfer box, clean everything up a bit better, um, and then work our way back. Absolutely, because the interior doesn't look great either. There's a bit of mould. The seats need a bit of work, but we've got a prep department for that, surely. We have. Hopefully, we'll be able to. Yeah, you because know, like we say, we found a few spares in the back, so um, we've got seats. Roof line, I don't know what we can do with, but we'll um, we'll go and see our department and see what we can do with it. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, we've gone kind of gone through methodically. It's clean as a whistle underneath, really. I don't think any of the suspension and brakes. It might need a bit of clean up with standing rust, but the calipers certainly look free. Yeah. Um, let's see what spare bits we've got, shall we? Okay. Right. Pile of spare bits that came out of the back of the car. You may have seen in the short montage we did when it was getting washed. We unloaded the back of it, and we've got this. We also apologise for the background noise. Right above the fence. Yes, right, yeah. <laughs> but the one thing I spotted, Greg, these are very good door cards. I think our prep department will have a great time getting these nice and clean. Yep, there yeah, they all look good. Um, we've got these, we've got, uh, well, we've got the seats as well. They look good, probably a bit of WD-40 needed on the rails, just a bit of treatment, a bit of yeah. clean up, wire brush kind of thing. A got lot of these... Gearbox tunnel. Yeah, uh, a lot of the of standard floor pan that's missing out of that, I suspect, is here because they were putting a lot of the sound deadening on it. Yes, yeah. So we've got a gearbox tunnel there, part of the floor pan there. Um, a box full of bits. Yeah. So, okay. see we've got a bonnet hinge there as well. That would yeah. be handy. Save Absolutely. us using the broom. Absolutely. So. Um, Right, I think we need to get Magic Dave on the case now, see if we can get this engine started. Let's see if we can get it going. I can hear the pump going. The pump is going. We'll have a go at that door some. Well, we got fuel coming out. We'll have a go at that door sometime. Yeah, that's just... Leak. There's a starter issue there. Well, that's an earth issue. All right, turn it off. That's that cured. Well, the Land Rover decided to do exactly what Land Rovers do and not start. The three of us decided to have a look over. We first checked the fuel pump. We then looked over the other various electronic issues going on, of which there were many. But for some reason, the starter motor just didn't want to budge. There was even a bit of smoke there as well when Dave tried to bridge the ports to get the solenoid to engage. Unfortunately, this Land Rover just did not want to play ball at this time. We even had the idea to try and rock the engine on the starter motor to see if it would maybe turn it and get it to free itself up. Alas, our efforts were a bit fruitless. But we knew the engine turned over because it did it while it was in gear. So it's not the engine that seized on, hopefully. Okay, right, we're going to leave it there for this week because it um, turns out this needs a bit more work than we thought of. Greg, it's not looking good, is it? No, I think it's just a wiring issue. But if it can't handle a little bit of wet, it's not going to be much good off-roading. Absolutely. Dave, thanks for your help in trying sure to get this up and running. Uh, that concludes episode one of the Land Rover project. Tune in for episode two. Hopefully we'll give you some good news. Hopefully that'll be running before we start to uh, take it out of the car. How about that? Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone.